I want to welcome you to our CloudCon integration and Web API expert breakout session. This is the session for SOA Software, and with us we have Laura Heritage, Principal Solution Architect. Laura, welcome back to CloudCon integration and Web API. Thanks, Vance. It's great to be here. In her post, Laura ensures the SOA Software portfolio of API technologies meet customer needs. She also helps adopters implement API and SOA solutions, including establish API business strategies and best practices. Previously, by the way, she was responsible for establishing IBM's API management business. In her session this morning, a new breed of technical leader, the 101 to defining your API business strategy, Laura presents why the API economy represents the next big idea and the big opportunity. She will review why this API economy requires a new breed of leader who can understand both business and technical natures of the products they sell and support, and she'll help sharpen your leadership skills on APIs with an overview of many key concepts, including how to build API business cases, organizational structures needed for successful API projects, API value chains, business models, and much more. If you haven't already done so, you can download the slides for Laura's session right now. Just click the link under the viewing area. You'll see in that same region that she's brought some terrific value-added white papers and other downloads. They're available for you right now as well. And we like to make this interactive where we can. So to connect with Laura, just type into the Ask a Question box. So with that, let me hand it over to Laura and have her give us the overview of API leadership with her sense of new breed of technical leader, Laura. Thanks, Vance. Um, today I'm really going to focus and talk about that new breed of technical leaders. These are the leaders that really understand the value of the assets they create to the business and how the business can capitalize on them. I will introduce concepts that these technical leaders should understand in order to communicate effectively with the business and to define a successful API program. I'm going to start off with a dramatization of a typical scenario I see when I talk to all sorts of enterprises around the world. And this is truly a dramatization. It starts off, typically, with some C-level executive coming to your enterprise architect and says, Mr. Enterprise Architect, I just talked to this analyst and we need APIs. APIs are number one priority. Make it happen. The enterprise architect comes back and says, that's great. We've been doing APIs for years with SOA. We just really need to revamp the, the SOAP to rest and we'll be set. Subconsciously, that enterprise architect or API architect is finally thinking, woohoo, I finally get the governance platform that I've needed to manage our internal services as well. This is great, right? API and SOA management. Glad the executives are finally on board. So he goes back and says, we need an API platform to help us do this revamp. And then also the API platform allows us to provide easier consumption, security monetization, so all this great things, Mr. C-Level. Mr. Business Sponsor, can I have the money for this platform? The business sponsor typically looks at the enterprise architect and says, Mr. Enterprise Architect, what on earth is that going to do for my business? And so the enterprise architect sits there and goes, hmm, well, of course, it extends the reach of your business. That's what APIs do. That's what the messages are out on the market. It takes our company and puts us in tablets. It puts us in mobile phones. It puts us in smartphones, connected cars, refrigerators, everything. And the business sponsor just sits there and looks at him with a, a blank face. That is IT mumbo-jumbo. What does that really mean? Again, what does that have to do with my business? Aren't you guys – that's technical stuff. Aren't you doing that anyway? Right? Isn't that business as usual? Stop the show. Stop and think. We need to communicate better with the business because to an enterprise architect, the benefits of an API strategy and API platform are obvious. And we can typically, from an enterprise architect or a technical perspective, we can typically um, segment to four different adoption patterns. Right? The first adoption pattern stems from that SOA era and establishing an API, taking SOA to the next level and establishing an API culture internally to really allow innovation to occur and to prepare you to go to mobile, better reach with your partners and eventual to that external innovation and platform notion that we so hear about from the API economy perspective. The enterprise architects 
see the business value very obviously, okay? Your business executives will not find it obvious. They just won't, right? You'll paint these beautiful pictures, and they just won't get it. You need to show them the money. You need to really specifically show them the money of where they can find the value to the business in order to get the API platform you need, in order to establish an API culture, in order to reach those different adoption patterns. For example, let's take a different interaction with the banking scenario. The enterprise architects and team, you really need to find and talk with those business sponsors, those executive business sponsors, figure out what they are trying to do with the business. For example, this one business sponsor from a bank says, I really want to streamline the way we reach and sell and upsell to the small to medium businesses so that we can grow our revenue. The business executive from the bank says, what I found is that small to medium businesses spend a large majority of their time just trying to do the day-to-day -day tasks of managing their business. Instead of focusing on their business, it loses revenue for them and it loses revenue for us. So how can we make that better? This is where the enterprise architect, who understands everything that's going around in the enterprise, from the products and services that the enterprises use itself to run the bank, as well as the products and services that it puts out to everyone else. So, for example, this enterprise architecture says, we have some core business functions that would help small to medium businesses run their businesses easier. What we could do is we could expose these as API services and either sell them to the small to medium businesses or give them away. And this could be a mechanism to get more business from that small to medium market, plus make the business owners of those small to medium jobs easier so they can concentrate on their business and bring in more revenue. So the business leader goes, great. Tell me more. But now what do you do as the enterprise architect? You have that great idea. How can you bring it and make a fuller vision for the business leader? You need to do your research. You need to build a straw man business case. You need to go look out what your competitors are doing. Simply go out on the Internet. Look at what your competitors are doing. You need to build a business case with projection of revenue impact. These numbers don't have to necessarily be real because you might not know those numbers, right? But you can put in some placeholder numbers that can be filled in by someone that does later, but really just start to build that straw man business case with projections. And then show them a pilot execution plan. So if you were going to take this, what would it take just to do a small pilot to prove out your business case? So really, it's do your research and build a straw man business case. You don't have to be an expert at building business cases to do this. Anyone can do it. But it really helps get your ideas across. You present this straw man business case to your business sponsor and he's like, wow, that sounds good. That's a good idea. What do we need to do? The enterprise architect is thinking in his head, yes, success. I get my API management platform. But that's just the beginning. That's just the technical thing. So what you need to do from that straw man business case is you really must treat this new API as a product. You need to establish a team that really has to go through and build the real business case, build the real market analysis and competitive analysis and, you know, establish business models and sales executions communication plans, and, you know, obviously the enterprise architect's favorite, the technical platform and the support required to actually bring this new API as a product into reality. So there's a lot of things that need to go around this API as a product, and you as a new technical leader need to have an understanding of all of these pieces that must fit together. So when we look at who are the digital stakeholders in this new enterprise? There's new roles emerging, and you can see that by querying LinkedIn or Googling all over. But from an executive sponsor's perspective, and this isn't an all-encompassing role. These are just a few of the key roles. You typically have a business sponsor, the guy that we are talking to, a new role that is very popular and emerging across every enterprise that I'm talking to is a chief digital officer. They are typically involved for all of the mobile initiatives and basically taking the company to the next step into this digital world. So they're going to be a very good ally from the enterprise architecture team standpoint. You really need to get to know and understand your chief digital officer. 
Another incredibly important person in the enterprise is the chief information and security officer. Everything from PCI compliance to controlling and securing the data that's within your enterprise. There's new security breaches every day across every enterprise, so this guy is going to be incredibly important. And then now when you go down to the API, this is a relatively new set of folks in the enterprise as well, or it's a set of folks who are taking their skills to the next level and vamping them up. For example, you need an API product manager, and this is where I'm saying this is one of the new breeds of technical leader. This person is very technical and understands APIs and the API economy, but also has a very keen sense to the business, right, and how basically on that first chart that I show, how all of those pieces fit together and work together. And so from an enterprise architecture perspective, this person is going to be a very key ally as well. And you need someone with that experience that can link everything together. The enterprise architects, API architects, security architects, they have a very strong role on the API team as well. And you might have one person that plays all those roles, or you might have someone for each specific subject area. It really depends on how big your organization is and how big your initial API strategy is going to be. If it's a pilot project, you're going to have people playing one or more of these roles. The enterprise architect, if they're very strong, business orientation could actually play a API product manager role to some extent. You're going to have an API developer who is responsible for the API design and developing out that API. And then you're going to typically have an operations lead, and that's the person that's responsible for keeping the API platform up and running, keeping the API up and running itself. So this API team can be, like I said, one or two people that playing several different roles, or you could have several different people, depending on how large your API initiative is. Most importantly is your go-to-market team, okay? And we're going to get into this where you have a developer advocate, that is, if you're having a truly external API strategy, right, where you're trying to reach that long-tail developer, a developer advocate is going to be incredibly important. This is a person that is a developer themselves that can communicate and talk just like the developer and understands what developers want. They become your liaison and person that communicates with them. Digital marketing person. They say developers don't like to be marketed to, but it really depends on which developer market segment you're going after. Are you going after a partner market segment in a particular vertical or where you're trying to reach? And we'll deal, talk more about that in a minute. And then you have your digital sales. If your API strategy is really about monetization that provides direct revenue, you are going to need to sell that API and have a sales force team and so forth. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. The next thing I want to talk about that everybody on your team needs to understand is really that value chain of that API. And typically the product manager should definitely know the value chain of what API you're trying to produce and work with the team to establish it. The product manager must not only understand why a app developer would want to use that API, but also why the end user would want to use an app that the developer is trying to make. Understanding that full value chain will help you create an API that will most likely drive the results that you're trying to build, which is increase in revenue. Get more of those end users which drive revenue for you. So where do you source the API from? If you talk with your enterprise architecture teams, they understand everything that is going through your enterprise, the things from what the enterprise is used to run the business and also the services and tools that the enterprise sells out to its consumers. So you can go source things from your existing business processes, your existing SOA services, any cloud services that you might use. There's databases of information, there's mainframe applications, and there's BI systems with tons of information in there that depending on what you're trying to do, for example, back in the banking scenario I gave earlier, you might take some of the core business functions that you use to run your business and say, you know what, we can carve this out, put an API around it, and put it out as a service for our small to medium businesses and then sell, upsell different loans and other types of services to them through that mechanism. So there's different ways you can take a look at what you have, some of the things that you take for granted day to day and actually make and grow your business on those things. 
when you've identified the asset that you want to expose, the next thing is to come up with a business model for that particular asset. And it really depends on that particular asset and what you're trying to do with it from an API perspective. Because there's free APIs, there's APIs where the developer has to pay, and there's APIs where the developer gets paid, and then there's the indirect model where you have APIs that are out there that actually drive revenue because they direct traffic or direct folks, your consumers, to another area of your business where you see the revenue increase. And I want to thank John Musser, who is the founder of Programmable Web and API Science. I asked him if I could borrow his charts because in the true nature of APIs, I'm reusing instead of spending my time on rebuilding these wonderful charts that he created. Going on to the next chart, if we take a closer look into the API business models, you can see the developer really breaks down into several different ways a developer can pay, from a pay-as-you-go to a freemium to a transaction fee, all sorts of things. And this is just a top-level example. So if we take a closer look at those business models, you can really tell that it breaks down even further into developer pays. Developer pays either goes pay as you go, it goes to tiers or transactions, and even going over to where the developer gets paid. How are you going to do a developer gets paid type of thing? What's the scenario? What are the business models? This is where your API product manager really needs to work closely with your business sponsor to really find out the correct way to charge and monetize your API. And then work closely with the development team and because of the API platform in order to realize that monetization scheme. Now, in the indirect model, there are many different ways to drive revenue as well, and here are some examples. Now, one of the mechanisms for the indirect model is the internal use of the APIs, which is by far the largest adoption of an API strategy is actually establishing an API culture within your enterprise, which is what typically the enterprise architects are trying to do to take their SOA to the next level, by far the largest adopters of the API. And when you start out with one strategy for your API, it'll change and it'll evolve as you grow and you learn about your product. Now, besides establishing a business model around your APIs, you really need to establish communication plans. And there's several different communication plans. Here's an example of a communication plan that I created for what should happen when a partner or developer reports a problem. What are the steps? Who gets notified? So for the developer, I found a problem. He opens a ticket. The API developer notifies the app developer that they received the ticket. The API developer then notifies the product manager if it is a major problem that needs her attention. If it's even a major, if it's a security-related problem, there needs to be a mechanism in place for the API product manager to notify the chief information security officer. So there's mechanisms and plans that need to be put in place. And then also the API developer also lets the developer advocate know so that the developer advocate can communicate the information and issue to the rest of the developer community to make sure that the developer community is well aware. Developers, they like information. They don't want to sit there and waste hours and hours on a debugging bug that the API provider already knew about but just didn't tell them. So be courteous to your development community. Don't waste their time. Now, other types of communication plans that are going to need to be put in place is communications of plans around an API release, new versioning. How does that happen? Do you need to notify the API developer needs to notify the product manager? The product manager needs to notify the marketing and sales and all that kind of stuff. And there's tools around, and so software provides tools that help you establish different communication plans that are necessary to support your API initiative, no matter if the API initiative is any one of those adoption patterns, be it internal, mobile, partner, or truly that external. I just put one example of communication plan, but there are several. So how does that partner or developer submit a problem? Typically, there is a tool, an API developer portal, that helps facilitate the communication between all your app developers and your partners and the API developer. There's dashboard discussions. There's a place where you can open a ticket. 
there's a place where an API developer can put out an alert in order to communicate with their app developers and so forth. So the tool that you use as your developer portal needs to be able to be rich in this function because really submitting what you do around your problem and tracking is, is very, and enhancements is very important. Moving on, we have legal aspects need your attention. How many of you have ever read a terms of service or terms of use or terms of agreement document? I mean, they're everywhere. You can't even start your car without accepting a terms of use. But rarely are they ever read. And I strongly suggest that you start reading them. You need to know what an identity clause is. You need to know what holds harmless is, limitations. You need to be able to know that you need to put a commercial license in your commercial clause in your terms of use so that the developer, if they build something, they can actually sell whatever they build. All those type of things are, are very important. The other thing that's very important is that the terms and conditions you create should be able to be readable by a human, not a lawyer. Okay, very important because if your terms and conditions is too difficult to read, too much legal jargon, most of the developers, if you're trying to reach that long tail developer community, they will pass your API by and use an API with even less function but has a more readable terms and conditions because they don't want to have to hire a lawyer to read the terms and conditions that you set forth. Basically, we have to do market segmentation of who you're trying to reach with your API and make the terms of conditions pertinent for that particular market segment. So if you're just going after partners of large corporations that do have a large legal firm and you need a little bit more protection, you can do that. But if you're going to the way other end of the spectrum, you need to be aware of these terms and conditions. As I was talking about earlier, information security, need I say more? I mean, really, very important. Weekly we hear about credit card breaches and you have to go and reset your password and every one of the systems you use because so-and-so, you went and used your credit card at this particular retail store and now your credit card information is out there. You need to understand what PCI compliance is if you're using OAuth. Can you do API keys and secrets and all of the stuff around security? Very, very important when considering API strategy. API marketing plan. Again, as I was talking about before, you need to know what type of developers, partners are you targeting. Is this API strategy going off to just known partners? in a particular pool because you're trying to make connecting with them easier and so forth. Is it a truly external developer type of API that you're going after to drive innovation? Even within that particular large developer community, there's different types of developers out there and you need to segment and figure out which part you're trying to go after and how you're going to work with them. And does your API and services you're delivering meet the needs of that particular target that your market segment that you're targeting? You need to understand what types of messages resonate with them, what types of campaigns you will need to do. Can you reach your target through trade shows? Is that where your target marketplace goes? Or do you need some other type of way to communicate and reach those the target market? For example, will hackathons increase adoption rate and provide the benefit that you're trying to look at? Do you need to hire an outside marketing firm to help you reach your target? This brings us into developer and, and portal partner outreach. How are you going to reach them? How are you going to communicate with them? I talked a lot about a developer portal. That is one mechanism for you to reach your particular market segment. Developer advocates and marketing also play a role with how you communicate with them and how you socialize where your APIs are. Developer advocate assigned to specifically communicate with those developers is pretty much a common form today in the API world. This is my favorite. You're putting an API out to market. You need to establish a sales plan for it if you're monetizing. It's not a build it, they will come. Even SaaS needs a sales force, especially if you're enterprise and working on a new strategy for your enterprise. You need to invest in a sales force that understands how to sell the API, 
how to sell the services to your particular target market area. Otherwise, without a proper sales plan, you will fail. The business will come to you and say, look, you said if we put this API out there, we would open a completely new channel. Money would just be flowing through this API. It doesn't flow through the API if nobody knows the API is there, nobody knows how to use the API, and nobody's bought the API. So you really need to establish that team in order to build that. You need the proper marketing. You need the proper developer advocacy. You need the proper sales plans in place in order to have a successful API strategy if you're going external to partners and to that external long-tail developer. And I would even contend that even applies from an internal perspective when you're dealing with trying to establish an API community with in an enterprise. You need developer advocates. You need a specific level of internal marketing to get people to use the API and make them aware that they're there. And some aspects you do need to go out and sell to different lines of businesses why they need to use this particular API. You need to treat it as a business. So with that, each stakeholder will need tools to be successful. All the way down from the lifecycle management, they need to be able to build the services and APIs in the right way. They'll need tools to help speed up development of those through using service integration. You'll need service gateways to secure and protect your systems. You'll need developer engagement, developer communities in order to build that ecosystem with any one of those adoption scenarios, from internal adoption all the way out through partner and external adoption. And all of them, especially for the business, need a way for the business to view and utilize the analytics from the API's usage. A good API platform, a unified API platform, will address the needs of multiple stakeholders, everywhere from the business on analytics, monetization, quota management, partner management, licensing, all of that good stuff through to security of the gateway, authentication, PCI, the development of mediations, life cycle, and so forth, and then all the way out to the developer portal where everybody is going to come to search, document, and group. And the API platform that you put in place should be able to be in place for internal API management and grow with you to the partner relationship management and all the way out to the external world. It should be one platform. You shouldn't need several different platforms to do all of that. SOA software provides unified SOA and API platform. It consists of three core capabilities, the lifecycle management to help the development team and enterprise architectures teams to build the right services and APIs and make that happen very quickly, to the gateway to help you assemble and orchestrate and secure and cache and accelerate your APIs, and then to the developer community manager where your business, your API product managers, your API architects and your business can work on to establish the product plans and licenses and policies that go for using the APIs to analyzing the API's usage and, and the monetary results from that. Slide 26 shows the unified platform and how that supports each stakeholder, how they would interact. And I just went through that on the previous page, as you can see from the community manager perspective, where API product managers, executive sponsors, utilize that community manager with the app developer partner utilizing the community manager as well. The API developer uses the community manager to communicate with those app developers and partners and developer advocate as well. And moving on down. So you can see that SOA software provides that complete unified platform that snaps together and works together based on the needs of your business at the time. That platform is available in a flexible deployment model. We have a complete PaaS offering. So you can get started quickly in the cloud if you're doing any partner or external API management to begin with. Or if you are working on getting your internal API management solution in order and have sensitive data and want it on a completely on-premise, so a software solution is available as a completely on-premise solution. And this on-premise solution can then take you out to your partner and external developer community as well. And some customers choose a hybrid model where they have the unified gateway on-premise and they leverage the community manager 
in the cloud and the SaaS-based platforms that helps you bridge on-premise to the cloud in a very unique fashion. And that's my overview today of a new breed of technical leaders and all of the things that they should keep in mind as they go to the future so that they can easily talk and provide the value of their assets to the business and actually fundamentally help the business change to meet the new digital enterprise. We have several resources available on SOA.com. The Resource Center is specifically resource.soa.com, and you can find other recordings and webinars at the Resource Center as well. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We'd love to hear from you. That concludes my formal remarks. I'm going to turn it back over to Vance. Laura, great session, really embracing not just the technology issues, but also the organizational ones and the ways to think and scope about an API initiative. Really great session. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as you might expect, you've triggered some questions from both sides of the brain, the business as well as the technical. So let's begin with uh, your conversation about stakeholders. You spent a lot of time on that. It's very interesting to see how all these different people that may not work together on a day-to-day -day basis have a lot to offer in the context of an API initiative or discussion. So this idea of stakeholders for the API and what you call the digital enterprise, a question comes in, is this a complete list that you posted on your slide? And relatedly, do I need to assemble all these people at the start, or can I build out this community over time as we do more and more projects? This isn't a complete list of the digital enterprise, but it is it is a is a basic list of the digital enterprise. And no, you don't have to have a person to fill each one of those roles right, a separate person for each one, a single person can play multiple roles in the digital enterprise, but you are going to need um, to have someone that is a, a business sponsor. You are going to need someone that can play that API product management role if you are monetizing and taking your API out externally to partners or to that external developers. If your API initiative is purely an internal API management initiative, which large majority of them are, the enterprise architecture team or someone on the, that somebody that reports the digital officer um, typically can play that, that role from an internal API standpoint. So the roles are flexible, but you do need to have someone that can play multiple roles or you need someone to fill the roles that I at least have defined. You know, Laura, as I look at the picture of the slide, how you've painted it out, it almost seems as though you're helping create a roadmap for a new center of excellence where the success isn't just SLAs or QoS or things that, you know, IT architects would think about. It's really this convergence of the technical and the business not just business uh, tactical success, but the overall business strategy, and that when you have all these people in place, you've kind of got an API center of excellence. Is that one way to think about it? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good, strong analogy of what we're doing. We're actually, if you have a center of excellence in place, I, I, we say that API and SOA is, is converging. And I would say, yes, it is from a technical perspective and how you use SOA, it is definitely converging. But when you look at it from a methodology or a management point of view, I would say that from that perspective, API is an extension. So this API center of excellence that you see here on the slide, as you call it, is really uh, an extension of your um, SOA center of excellence. So very good, very good analogy there. Okay, great. Excellent. Uh, you know, speaking of this convergence of API and SOA, there's a question here that goes right to the heart of that. This simply says, you mentioned we can source APIs from our SOA services. Is that a simple one-to-one -one mapping? And if not, how would we go about getting started? You know, wouldn't it be nice if it was simple one-to-one? -one? I think in some aspects it's, it's a simple one-to-one -one mapping, um, especially if you already have a partner initiative already that's uh, SOA-based. Right, So maybe you already have some SOA services that you've uh, exposed out to partners and you want to take that to the next level. You might um, be able to just restify that, establish a, a partner portal, and accelerate the drive of that business that way. In those cases, it can be a one-to-one. -one. In, in most cases, 
Um, the, the SOA services are going to need to be revamped, as I said, or tweaked or combined with other assets in order to really make that valued asset that a developer would want to write an app for, for which a end user would want to consume. And to do that, API platforms, as I mentioned, provide an excellent capability to help orchestrate, revamp your, your SOA services um, to become APIs. You know, on that same theme, Laura, this convergence of API and so uh the question comes in, we mainly have B2B and A2A APIs. Will the API management platform for SOA software help us there? Very good question. And, yes, it definitely will help you in a, a B2B and A2A scenario. In fact, a large majority of initial API um, strategies start off with B to B and A to A, and and so from a SOA software perspective, we have focused heavily on helping enterprises with those needs. You know, Laura, your slide about the straw man, uh, even though it was only the business case, triggered an interesting comment from the IT perspective, and simply it says, uh, we're looking for a simple proof of concept project for APIs. Does SOA software have a best practice or a template that would help us quickly design and launch our first API project? That is a very good question, and yes, we do. Uh, SOA software does have a practice that can um, – help you build business case and a straw man business case in order to do uh, proof of concepts. In fact, that's largely what I do um, at, at enterprise customers, really help go in there, take a look, build those straw mans, and, and help you from an enterprise architecture perspective or uh, an IT perspective um, champion and talk to your various stakeholders to build that. Uh, you know, Laura, this other issue about, I mean, IT knows a lot about governance and SLAs, but when you talked about terms and conditions, that seems a little more legalistic than IT might be traditionally familiar with. And so the question here says, uh, how can the API platform help us manage these terms and conditions for acceptance of outside users, whether they be developers or partners? There's very good questions coming up today. Um, and so... How do you manage your terms and conditions acceptance is, is another very good one. SOA Software's developer portal provides license management, terms and conditions management, and you can actually put a life cycle around the acceptance of the, the terms and conditions. Um, so, for example, if you have a longer process, boarding process with partners and you have to do a couple different handshakes on both sides, uh, we can put a life cycle around those handshakes and then also record the interactions for later auditing and, and legal use for you. The fully integrated platform is available uh, in the cloud, and you can get a trial. Just go to SOA.com and click on Try Now. Oh, cool. Really great. Laura, Heritage Principal Solution Architect at SOA Software, thanks for a terrific session on leadership in API as well as taking so many questions. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And as we like to do here at CloudCon Integration and Web API, we're going to leave a slide up here. Laura mentioned some great resources. Some of them are right here underneath the viewing area in the SOA Software breakout room, but others you'll have to go to the SOA Software website, including to get uh, information and to subscribe uh, for the free trial. Thanks again, everyone.